Greetings, Mickey here. Welcome to my Scorching Ray of Emulation Totem Belt. Um, it's gonna be a long build guide and I wanted to cover a few things. Um, the basics and the gear, the possibilities, uh, what to expect, etc. So it's gonna be my league starter for the next league on Necropolis and uh, it's a very smooth progression uh, you have after level 32 or something like that around that area when you finish your normal lap uh, you can smoothly start playing scorching ray totems before that i would go for magma Ord ignite it's a little bit a uh, little bit better but um yeah you can if you want start at level 12 with uh, spell totem and scorching ray and add another totem and you're fine if you want but um i would start after the normal lap once you get the extra totem so <laughs> that's the first thing. Uh, then it's an Aronda. Uh, you are not a mortal on this build. Um, definitely not. You can uh, add a good amount of defenses into it if you want. Uh, but you're not a mortal. Uh, you don't clear maps the fastest. You clear maps fine. But uh, you are not a tornado shot character or something like that. And you can kill all the bosses. Um, up to you, boss. I. Uh, guess some ubers i haven't tried it it's a test character uh, that's something i will attempt um, next week but let's say everything up to ubers is absolutely no problem um, you can complete your full atlas uh, if you want uh, so uh, yeah it, it can do basically anything but nothing really good and yeah it doesn't scale as well as uh, a mana stacker for example um, or stat stackers in general attribute stackers uh, armor stacker something like that but those are really expensive builds <laughs> this costs uh, like under one divine per item slot i have a list in my pov what some of the items costed in affliction league the first week um, you can see it on poe ninja search um, for the items and you see the history of the prices I checked those and Affliction was, uh, um, yeah, some items dropped more, but uh, there was inflation as well. So it's just an indicator how much items can cost and, um, yeah, uh, that's something I cover later. So, first thing uh, here, Scorching Ray of Emulation and Scorching Ray. Uh, which one is better? If you just play six totems, uh, Scorching Ray is stronger um, because it gains more debuff stage damage basically at eight stages it deals more damage it has fire exposure on it uh, we cover that one with um, with other means uh, to gain exposure on scorching ray of emulation uh, but the base damage is low the base duration is low and the cast time is higher um, scorching ray of emulation on one stage deals the damage of a four or five stage scorching ray something in between that and has a very high duration and I abuse the duration a little bit uh, with this totem belt. Uh, and yeah, this one is way better for clearing because you start with high damage and uh, don't need to ramp up the damage. And so, that's about Scorching Ray of Immolation here. How we play it, I basically play six totems and once they start casting a beam, I replace the totem so I want just one stage on the enemy and I replace the totem uh, so each totem beam deals a separate debuff on the enemy so I have six different scorching ray debuff on the enemy and each deals damage uh, that's a fact uh, except it's bugged I started scorching ray in one league and it was bugged <laughs> Uh, it is stated by the devel uh, developers that uh, it's intended that separate um, totems damage stack with Scorching Ray, basically. That's intention to. Uh, so after that, after I have one stage on the enemy, I replace the totems and have another round of stages um, with a high duration. Mm, and then I do it again and again and again and again. And I can have several um, rounds of stages on the enemy so in this case uh, let's let's clear the mobs a little bit okay 
It was a no showcase of uh, Defiance of Destiny on this build. Okay. Let's get audio. Mm, kill some stuff here. Okay. Um, yeah. Like I said, I place my, my six totems. And then I replace them again and again and again. Uh, and for bossing, I just run around and replace my totems all the time whenever I can to maximize the DPS. So in POB, uh, let's go over my POB here uh, quickly just to show you um, the DPS basically. So I got uh, 570k uh, DPS. I add 360k and divided by two because I use punishment and punishment uh, only works on low life um, but half of the time enemies are not low life uh, and the other half of the time they are low life um, so I take the middle DPS um, if it's on low life or not so um, this times six because I have six totems and yeah if I do for example Two rounds of totems i play six totems and replace it it's double the dps already uh, if i do it four times i'm at yeah, four times the damage um with just one stage of course you um often have uh, like two stages or three stages or four stages on the enemy sometimes maybe eight stages um it differs a little bit <coughs> if you have to dodge mechanics for example mm -hmm. and so on so, I have on the totem 6.5 seconds duration, and on top of it, I have temp chains, which has other effects of uh, on cursed enemies expire 25 percent slower. I also have 20 percent curse effect, so it's 30 percent slower. That's around 8.4 seconds of the debuff duration. If I can, if I manage to apply debuffs, um, one round of debuffs, basically every second. Um, it's eight times the damage um, of just just the stage one totems. Oh, uh, not 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 by four. It's divided by two. That's basically the DPS. If I can manage eight rounds of totems in the time, uh, I think it's possible in uh, um, in the perfect scenarios, but not realistic. Uh, I would go for something like. Um, Mm, let's divide it by eight again. Something like six rounds is easily possible, I would say, in most cases. That's uh, that's basically a realistic DPS um, number, I would say, that I can do six rounds of totem placement in the time um, where the debuff runs out the first one again. So yeah, that's how I basically calculate the DPS. It's something around that uh, that number with this character and this gear. Um, like I said, that's some test character. <laughs> it I just basically kept resist, kept my stats and tested around a lot and uh, didn't min-max my damage or something. I mean, I have a weapon with um, crafted mods basically and that's it. It's not really good. It's uh, It's a cheap weapon like one divine for the base, two divine for, for the multi-mod, and that's it, basically. Mm. And, and some basic items, nothing here double corrupted, the only corrupted item is a belt here, mm. just because uh, it costs the same as a non-corrupted belt. <laughs> so that's the only reason the rest of the gear is, um, I, I cover the gear uh, after this map run. So let's, let's go over a map, just run it a little bit. Mm. So that's basically the gameplay. I cast my uh, temp chains every like eight nine seconds, or sometimes more. Or just in between, I cast my temp chains. That that has some reasons. I'm gonna be um, immune against um, chill and freeze, etc. Um, thanks to a balance of terror jewel and. Um, I also gain my Arcan Search that way uh, for a high duration. If you um, have duration scaling, it uh, increases also the, du the duration of the Arcan Search. So uh, those are the reasons basically. And of course, tem Temporal Chains is a good curse um, to scale the damage on this build. 
So that's basically the gameplay and it's uh, always the same, I would say, since level 32. And of course, a little bit slower, but um, there's also way less uh, density. You place the totems and run to the next pack. Uh, that's basically the gameplay. And yeah, I I don't play safe <laughs> with this build. I basically frost blink into packs and then start placing totems. You can play this very safe at the edge of the screen. You can place a totem, stay away. Uh, we have many ways to slow enemies. Uh, you can play it very safe, like like this. Okay, everything is dead basically. Mm. You can stay at the edge of the screen and place the totems and you are fine. If I place a totem, it hinders enemies. I slow enemies with temp chains. So they are slowed a lot uh, if I really want. So let's go for a boss. Mm, I can prepare if I want my um, my curse text on me. Then at the edge of the screen, I, I can cast Arcanist Brand already. And now I recast my totems all the time. And yeah, the timing, um, yeah, that's the damage basically on some, some Guardian map. Uh, so this map had no damage modifiers and I showed you at the start of the video, I basically tanked groups of mobs all the time, like for three minutes straight. Mm, the reason is um, Defiance of Destiny. Uh, it's a very strong arm amulet and it's not even uh, good rolled. Uh, I miss catalysts on this one and it's not max rolled. It, it, is, uh, it can be way better in terms of uh, recovery. Uh, that's just some, yeah, a cheap, cheap option. And I don't even have an um, anointment on this one because I, I skilled this anointment on the passive tree. It's just from another character, uh, basically. So this is a defensive option. Uh, you are um, immortal in low damage map mod maps and of course um, you you don't play like that you don't stay in packs so usually you are very tanky just from this amulet but it's nothing I would always use um, so if you want to be tanky you don't want to die in maps use defiance of destiny you want to go for bossing a little bit more uh, once a single target damage, go for Replica, Dragon Fangs, Flight. Um, it's way stronger for that. And uh, you get way more damage. My P.O.B. uses um, Replica, Dragon Fangs, Flight. Um, if we use Defiance of Destiny, it's like um, a third of the damage. Because we need to change a little bit with the reservation. And the gem levels um, add a lot of damage. So, But still, uh, with Defiance of Destiny, you saw the boss kill. Um, it's pretty quick. Uh, the DPS is high enough uh, to do stuff like that. But Defiance of Destiny doesn't work well on bosses. It's very, very good for uh, mapping. Uh, that for sure. So with um, one damage mod, I can stay in packs most of the time. Like this. Depending on the damage mod, with two damage mods, I wouldn't tank packs. Uh, you can take... Um, a lot of hits, but at some point um, the damage gets too high and uh, you will die. Uh, but um, nobody plays like that and tanks all the time, all the packs, etc. But even um, without it, I'm pretty tanky while mapping. So I have few surprise deaths or something like that. When I, uh, when I die, I played very recklessly and something unexpected happened. So that's, that's the showcase of Defiance of Destiny in this build. Um, I had to skill uh, this node for Defiance of Destiny because my stats aren't high enough. I need 10 more strength, that's why I, uh, I respect this node. Okay, let's go back into the hideout. Let's cover all the stuff uh, now. So. Let's start with the passive tree, I would say. Mm, yeah, first of course you start with elemental damage uh, if you play the character new, but later on you want to go this path. Uh, it's still 8% increased damage here for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's start with something like this. Self-flagration. Mm, we gain 20% increased damage per curse on you. That's a roll range between 10 and 20%, depending on the roll. Of course, it's going to be more expensive or very cheap. Um, 
That's coupled with Soul Mantle. Soul Mantle is a 7 link basically for us. And we gain a hex when a totem dies. So if I replace totems, I also gain hexes. Since we spam totems all the time, it's guaranteed that I have 8 or 9 curses up all the time. Sometimes you don't refresh um, a single curse like this one punishment. Um, but most of the time, well, it, it just doesn't curse me with a curse. Uh, bad luck happens, but usually you have 8 or 9 curses on you. So that's um, that's 180% increased damage. Just from uh, this shovel and um, so mental, even without the hex interaction, it's a 7 link. Uh, that's already good. So that's something we use here. Uh, for support gems here, uh, in here we have multiple totems, efficiency, uh, controlled destruction, burning damage, and elemental focus. Mm. Yeah, awakened gems, elemental burning, dam uh, burning damage, and, and elemental focus are very, very good. I would invest in those uh, because both grant plus one level to scorching ray of emulation. That's uh, two additional levels, and um, like in POB, it adds 100k DPS basically uh, two levels that's jumping up from 360k to 460k something like that i mean if i i can show it here uh, at two levels 455 um yeah basically 100k uh, just from two levels here that's what uh, the awakened gems uh, do alone uh, it scales very well with uh, gem levels so Okay, uh, that's the first thing. Then uh, let's start with important stuff. Um, we got, of course, uh, reservation stuff here. Uh, you can use something else instead of increased effect on you. You can go for the max uh, elemental res. If you have both reserved, that's nice as well. Mm. Mm, probably a little bit better for defense uh, than uh, the effect for determination, but uh, I haven't POB'd it. Uh, then we got some mana mastery here for increased reservation efficiency of skills and the small nodes are very good as well. Uh, effect of Arcan Search uh, buffs our Arcan Search of course and um, we have this node Arc Arcane Blessing. Uh, so basically 10% Arcan Search effect uh, is 2% more spell damage. Uh, it's buffed by the nodes here, this one. So that's 4% uh, more spell damage, 4% more spell damage, and here 2% up to 4%, I would say. Uh, we spend 200 mana um, all the time. Mm, because the totem already costs 51 mana. Yeah. Um, that's usually the case, so not bad at all. Uh, then we got some life node, uh, ancestral bond here, of course. Uh, totem cluster is really bad, it adds basically... Mm, not much to the build. Um, I, I don't recommend using it. We got some fire exposure um, buff here on top. Mm, because we have master fire here. Uh, nearby enemies have fire exposure. That's 10% here. And we add 5% with this one. Um, to have some fire exposure. Another thing on this cluster jewel is those disorienting display. Um, we blind and nearby enemies when we use an elemental skill that works with uh, placing totems. So that's nice. Uh, some extra defense. Uh, a little layer on top of it. And smoking remains just for the damage. Then we got sleepless sentries here. That's very important. Uh, the best thing we can have on a cluster jewel in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Because um, twenty percent car speed and movement speed. Who doesn't want that? Uh, very good. Uh, another thing, uh, that's something I would go for early mapping. As soon as I map, I buy something like that if I can, mm, and just slap it in here without a large cluster and just this mod. Uh, it's so good. Uh, but if you can buy a, a second mod, uh, I would go for Snaring Spirits and Totems in the nearby enemies when some mounts. That's 30% movement speed reduction. Uh, very nice. For Drivel here, I use Immutable Force. You don't have to use it, but I like to use it because it basically makes it stun immune. Uh, that alone is nice. I don't use uh, Blood Notch. I tested it without the Energy Shield Mastery. It's uh, it's barely recovering anything. Mm. It's, it's sadly not worth it anymore. Um, 
except you use uh, the Val Valkyrium thing ring, um, but I cannot use it in my setup, so it's not possible. So I just use Immutable Force uh, to be basically stun immune. If you don't think you need it or you don't want it, use a rare jewel and you're done. Mm. Uh, maybe go for Forbidden Flame and Flash, uh, that's an op option as well. Then I got some rare jewel here, and just some stats on it. Mm -hmm. It's in the one divine price range, uh, range uh, a decent one. But you can also cover some missing resistances or attributes um, on the jewel or gain some um, reduced curse effect on you um, early on. That's uh, nice as well. Uh, then I got some militant phase. Uh, that's a high damage item. We gain um, inner conviction here uh, for 12 percent more spell damage uh, or 15 percent at the moment for me, uh, thanks to the high templar dominos. And you can have channeling skills deal 4 percent increased damage per 10 devotion, or with elemental damage or with totem damage. You want two of those. And you gain 88% uh, increased damage in this area. I have 110 devotion around here. You can do the math. Um, that's 88% increased damage. And 12 or 15% more damage here. Then we got some duration here. We wanted to scale duration. That's nice. I don't think it's worth going down here because, uh, well, your uh, bosses have phases, etc. Um, I don't want to go overboard and the way here is not that great. Um, like it's a lot, it's it's four to five travel points. Um, there's better stuff to skill in my opinion. So I went down here and got Penned Human for more spell damage when on low life. I got Vampirism for a uh, recoup, which helps uh, the defense. Um, and a balance of terror. Uh, action speed cannot be slowed below base value if you've cast temporal chains in the past 10 seconds. So it makes me immune against anything that stops my character in some way. Uh, yeah, you cannot be frozen, shielded, maimed, uh, hindered, etc. Uh, Elder cannot grab you and hold you. Um, ground effects don't affect you uh, if they can slow you. Grasping vines cannot affect you, etc. Very nice. Mm. That's the main reason I uh, self cast them chains. And the Arcan Search, of course. Mm. Then I got some 20 person curse effect here. Mm. And you can have some reduced effect on of curses on you as well if you um, don't use Viridis Veil. Um, that's that's helping as well. And here I got 40% um, reduced extra damage from crits uh, for some extra defense. So crits don't hurt me that much. Crits bad. And down here I have a Watcher's Eye, a one mod Watcher's Eye, nothing special. Uh, you can go for something defensive, offensive, whatever you like. Mm, yep, that's your personal preference. So for the Hierophant I started with Pursuit of Faith. Uh, which makes everything smooth with the 120 person uh, totem placement speed alone. The extra totem, we start with three totems, very nice. At level eight, uh, 38 we can have uh, multiple totem support and we have five totems at level 38. And after that point you breathe through the campaign and into maps, uh, very nice. After that Ritual of Awakening, uh, that's 25 person more damage with 5 totems, 30 person with 6 of course. Same with the regeneration. Uh, you have high life regeneration with it, mana is never an issue, uh, you never run out of mana with it. Very nice. After that point, uh, Merc Lab, I would go for Conviction of Power, just to have um, the 16 rest of Endurance Charge when you start mapping, makes gearing easier. But if you feel like you want more damage, start with Arcan Blessing. Um, but um, for me, it's enough to just wait for the Uber Lab. You don't really need the damage um, once you start mapping. Mm. It's basically for the passive tree. There are some options. Um, yeah, um, some stuff I did beyond that. Mm. I went for Safeguard here uh, just for some spell block. Um, 
and resist. I needed the 8 resist, I think, uh, on this gear, yeah. I wouldn't be capped, so I needed some resist somewhere, maybe from a jewel or something. I picked this. And spell damage from spell block. I also use temple shield here, so I got some uh, some spell block on this character, like... Uh, what is it? Um, where's the spell block? Yeah, 37. Not that much. Um, by far not capped. But everything helps a little bit, I would say. But that's optional, you don't need it. Uh, if you don't skill it, you can use the two travel points here, either here, this way, or down this way. Those are better in terms of um, stats you gain, like here, 10% elemental damage and 10 strength. Mm, we lack strength a bit, um, so you need less strength on your gear or something like that. Mm. But yeah, uh, that's what I did. And the other one is Overcharge, so I can use a fifth curse. It's just a plus one curse node for me, basically. And on top of it, uh, I sometimes gain three person more spell damage from this node as well. Uh, so that's helping a little bit. So over the gear. Uh, while we are at um, Overcharges, uh, I got Anathema. That's the biggest item you can use. That's the first item I will buy after the Soul Mantle um, self flagellation combo. Because it over doubles the DPS. Uh, if you check my POB um, and check this DPS, and I disable all my curses here, uh, how much DPS I lose. It's even worse if I enable uh, enemies on low life. Okay, ca I cannot enable it when punishment is not active. Okay, let's do it that way. Everything enabled, 572k. If I disable the curses because I don't <laughs> use the ring, it's it's like a quarter of the DPS or a third of the DPS. So it's granting us so much DPS. It's uh, It's insane. And just the string alone. So, uh, if, if you see it um, relatively cheap or something, I, the stats don't matter. Just buy it. Uh, you want it. Uh, it's the biggest DPS gain you can have mm -hmm. on this character. You don't need uh, overcharge here mm, that much because uh, oh, I didn't even use this one here. Uh, I use cast on damage taken and feeble. That's my fifth curse. Mm. You don't really need it. For that because while mapping i don't use arcanist brand basically i just use tempest uh, temporal chains i rarely use arcanist brand while mapping just for the boss but if you have it you have an extra curse and when a boss hits you it also has enfeeble and all the other debuffs uh, other curses on him uh, if you don't have this node uh, one of the curses will be replaced and uh, that's a little, little bit sketchy so yeah, up to level 90, I recommend specking two points into it uh, at some point. So that's nice. So Anathema, very important. And then I got Viridis Whale. Uh, very nice item, drops from Maven, but high drop chunks, like 20% drop chunks. It's pretty cheap, uh, like at maximum half a divine, usually except for day one. But on day two, day three, it's gonna be cheap. Uh, up until this point, uh, you can use just a Kikazaro and back this cluster here. Um, I have it in the POB, the start of map uh, POB. You have 90% reduced effect of curses on you. And if you really want the last 10%, uh, you can go for uh, this node. Or you use a rare jewel with reduced curse, curse effect. But 90% reduce effect is enough usually for white maps and yellow maps. Uh, you can live with that. Not a big deal. Mm. But at some point I wanted to re read this whale because um, hex um, you are hexproof while a magic ring is in the right slot. So you have this lock on your head, the curse. Uh, the curse doesn't do anything but you are still affected. You still gain um, the damage bonus from self-regulation. Uh, so that's nice about it, and uh, damage against you, uh, hitting you is unlucky, which is a big damage reduction. So basically, uh, damage is rolled twice against you. Mm. 
if the enemy deals 1 to 100 damage and he rolls a dice, uh, d100, uh, he has to roll a dice a second time and if the second time is lower, um, the lower damage is taken. Or the lowest of the two is basically taken. So it's like always a damage reduction for you mm, to have it. On some skills or something it's not that important but like Shaper Slam has like 5k to 13k damage, something like that. Uh, it's a big variance and if you hit something like 5-6k it's better than hitting the maximum, just the maximum. Mm, yeah, and lightning skills especially have a big variance. So, and we got good elemental res on the helmet and plus two, one or two of uh, socket gems. We want plus two of course, um, so we can boost our auras and determination here, yeah, petrified blood, mm, everything helps a little bit. And we can use an enlightening here, which also gains plus two levels. So that way, mm -hmm. I can use... Da, da, da. Oh, I need to swap the gem. I can use a Herald of Ash on top. I have enough remaining mana uh, to cast my stuff, etc. So that's nice. And like I said, Dragon, Bang, Dragon Fang's Flight, um, a lot of damage. You need the level of Scorching Ray Gems. You gain the mana reservation efficiency, etc. If you don't have it, um, with uh, don't have mana reservation efficiency, you need to swap the Herald out and uh, use the Fine Spinner, for example. Or instead you can use... Um, Instead of Tempest Shield, use Herald of Ash if you want the damage. That's your um, your thing, what you want to do. But with my setup, uh, just yeah, a level 3 Enlighten and uh, this Amulet, uh, I can use Herald of Ash without any more shenanigans. But you have other options um, to gain more um, um, yeah, uh, Reservation efficiency, like on a shield. The mods on the shield with socketed gems have reduced mana reservation efficiency, um, etc. There are mods on cluster jewels uh, that have uh, reduced mana reservation efficiency for something like uh, malevolence, like 50%, and you can squeeze something in. It uh, depends on your gear, which aura they use. Uh, for a shield, you want plus one totems, life, and whatever you can get. So avoid elemental elements doesn't do anything for me. Um, reduced extra damage from crits is nice, especially coupled with the 40% I have on the curse cluster. That's 97% reduced uh, crit damage, so that's helping a little bit. Um, yeah, for boots and gloves, uh, those are rare. You want attributes and resist on it and life. Um, for the belt, Cyclopean coil, I like it. It's nice. Nice to have, mm. because it makes me ignite immune and has life and attributes, etc. You can use a rare belt as well. Um, if you don't use um, Tempest Shield, when I started using it, um, I didn't use Tempest Shield, which makes you shock immune. Uh, so if you have to choose between something and don't use Tempest Shield, uh, you are also shock immune. So shock and ignite and immune, some increased damage, some life and attributes, that's nice. And you find some with uh, corruptions as well. And it's not that expensive. It's an elder drop, but a very common one. And you don't need max wall attributes usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. But you can use another belt. Um, someone mentioned Covert's Legacy, but I don't feel like it's good for the build. Not really. Uh, it doesn't do anything basically like this. I can use it and don't reserve life. Um, no, this one is my life. But with petrified blood, I still uh, cannot go over 50%. And the petrified blood only works under 50%. So that's still uh, doing nothing for that. If you don't use petrified blood, uh, if it's deactivated, um, that's a good option. Uh, you can go for Pain Attunement and uh, still gain the more spell damage with uh, Kova's Legacy. So if you want to build with that, you can do it. But I think other options are better. Like uh, Cyclopean Call just works. So, 
uh, yeah, in here I have Herod of Ash, Arrogant Support and Temple Shield, uh, basically. In my weapon, uh, Frostblink, Arcan Surge and uh, Temporal Chains, you wanna have Arcan Surge to a level where uh, it guarantees to proc on casting Temporal Chains. Like Temporal Chains has 41 mana cost and this needs 41 mana spent. Uh, that's the best case. And every second Frost Blink, um, I also refresh my Arcan Surge. So, yeah, I, I I think that's a good gem level. But depends on the gem level you have. Like a level 10 Temporal Chains has lower mana cost. Just keep that in mind. Mm, yeah. Uh, for the boots, I use Arcanist Brand, Elemental Weakness, Flammability, and Punishment. Mm, yeah, those are the, is my damage setup basically. I cast Arcanist Brand on very tanky rares or bosses, and that's it. For normal packs, you don't use it. Um, then I got my Var Lightning Trap. Uh, that's my another damage boost for bosses because it has Shock Ground. Uh, on the ground. I use it on, on, on the boss and um, it's nice to set up in phases etc. Very good, has three charges, um, doesn't require many souls etc. Uh, very good and quality on it is even better. Uh, shock ground then causes 20% increased damage taken so it's, it's a nice damage multiplier to have um, for one socket. Mm, very nice. Uh, so then I got um, Molten Shell or Val Molten Shell, so I have one I can use on demand and one that's uh, on cast when damage taken and Enfeeble, a uh, low level one, mm, which is still uh, huge in terms of defense. Like 18% less damage on normal and magic monsters, that's helping a lot while mapping and on bosses and we are still 11%. Um, yeah, that's, uh, who, who doesn't want that? Mm. Yeah, that's about the gear. The magic ring, you use whatever you need. I wouldn't would use life and maybe even recoup. Oh, that's nice, nice as well. But um, you need some some resist somewhere. So Cyclopean coil, it's not really needed. Um, you can you can just use a sticking wise. I have some somewhere. I tested something somewhere with it. Maybe it's this one. Something like this, um, like life, triple resist, and uh, you're fine. Uh, you have easy access to resist, I'm way over capped, etc. That's an option as well. If you use Tempest Shield, you're basically just not uh, Ignite immune, and Ignite is not the worst uh, thing you can have on you. Uh, you can counter Ignite with um, Soul of Everest, uh, that's an option as well. Or use other means like tattoos or something like that. Mm, yeah, um, do whatever you like, but um, Cyclopean Coil is just cheap. I like it. Okay, for flask, um, Quicksilver, Amethyst Flask, Jade Flask, Granite Flask. Um, if you can, or Rumi's um, for block, that's that's another little layer of defense uh, on top of it. So, yeah, that's that's basically about the gear. Um, for reservation, of course, you don't have a level 3 Enlighten early on. Um, of course, you're not low life early on, and mm, you don't have a mana reservation efficiency from the amulet slot. Just let's just use that mm, and gain some attributes. I need some attributes to show the stuff. Okay, I respec, I respec uh, for attributes. Um, right. 10 here and I'm fine, I guess. Okay. Uh, just to showcase. So, uh, in this case, I can use my Malevolence and uh, Determination, for example. I have some remaining mana. Uh, so, in this case, if I'm not low life, I can use my Temple Shield on top. And I have enough mana to cast my stuff. So, that's basically um, 125 and 250 um, at that point. If I go low life, I can of course um, just go for this combo, uh, like Tempest Shield, um, one on um, Arrogance and one uh, just self-cast, that's fine. 
but now I'm still missing t petrified blood. I don't want to go low life with it. So um, at that point, you have to think a little bit about a uh, little bit about what you do when mm, you have to min max it a little bit. Mm, so in this case, I I would go go for this and maybe remove determination. Uh, that's an option. Determination is very good. So you want uh, extra reservation like level one enlighten uh, to start even uh, yeah start with with going low life. Uh, that's basically the point. Mm. So at that stage I can go for where is it uh, determination. So with this I don't have enough mana. Um, or I have. Um, barely enough mana to cast my totem one, so and that's working as well with the setup. It's enough. It's enough. I can go for, go low life with that. Uh, that's possible without any further um, uh, mana reservation efficiency. But with a level one enlighten uh, that goes to level three, and you're fine. Mm, but you don't have enough mana to use um, the Fiance banner or Herald of Ash, and that's the way you are. Uh, Scale up your auras, or stack up your auras, just uh, one by one. Uh, you don't need everything at the same time, like uh, with uh, DoD. I can use the Fine Banner, but not Herald of Ash or Temple Shield. You have to choose what you like. Do you want more damage or more defense? Do you want the shock immunity? Do you not need it because you use Cyclopean Coil, for example? Mm. That's how you switch things around. Um, just take the auras and uh, look what you can fit in, what you use when. But I would say you need a level 1 Enlighten uh, to go low life with Pain Attunement. Uh, because you need to be able to use Determination, um, Male Volance and Petrified Blood on mana. Uh, of course there are other means if you have Reservation Efficiency on the shield. Uh, you can use petrified blood in the shield, and um, the mana cost reduction, uh, the mana reservation, is even lower, and it can fit in again. Uh, so that's depending on your gear. But without petrified blood, I wouldn't go for low life. It's way too dangerous. Um, petrified blood helps low life, life builds. <laughs> so uh, that's something. So after this point, let's back the note back get our life back okay after this point we have some options to go for i got it in my pop what i would do with the passive tree mm, my personal level 100 tree um, so in this case i would go for a megalomaniac here uh, in this slot that's four skill points and uh, go for another jewel slot here, that's another three skill points and the rest into life and you're done basically. Mm. Or you can go for uh, the recovery mastery here, like nearby enemies have reduced life region, uh, that can help a little bit as well on very tanky rare monsters, but not really needed. You can remove it and get another point in life if you want. Or skill something else, but that's what I would most likely do. Mm. And I got a tree here with all useful options, everything you could skill, like 149 points here, just to show you the options you have. Mm, yeah, stun mastery, not really. Let's let's get it away. Mm, you can have more spell block here, for example. That's an option as well. Uh, do whatever you like, what you feel you need. But yeah, that's my level 90 character. That's um, easy to achieve, I would say. Mm, yeah, uh, that's about it. I have a P.O.B. Warrior gear, gear set here uh, with P.O.B. Warrior stats, uh, just to show you which stats are desirable, for example, that's unrealistic gear. <laughs> that's why I call it P.O.B. Warrior gear. Mm. And I have the start of the map here. Um, Balefire is very good at the start of um, mapping. It's at level 60 you can buy it for one chaos and you have a level 25 scorching ray when at that point you have like level 15 scorching ray 
it's 10 levels higher and you have a falling um, if you socket spell totem, multiple totems and uh, burning damage for example into it. Mm. And he said don't even need to be linked just in the single socket. Uh, so very cheap high damage um, you can get there. I would use Balefire until you have a 5 link soul mental, I would say. I still use a soul mental, but um, I would just use Scorching Ray skill <laughs> with a 4 link here. Um, up to that point. Mm, another good item is Trimnos Resolve early on. It has fire damage, high armor, HP, res, and you cannot be frozen and chilled. Like all the time if you spam totems. Uh, so that's very nice to have as well. A very cheap option. Mm. Of course Hikazaru and start of maps um, we want a medium cluster with sleepless sentries and uh, self regeneration. Um, everything costs like 1 to 5 chaos mm, usually. Maybe not the medium cluster jewel but Hikazaru is a 1 chaos item so mental 1 to 4 chaos, Rimnos resolve 1 chaos, Bellfire 1 chaos. Uh, so everything is very cheap and we already have um, yeah, decent amount of damage, like with the Scorching Ray here. Um, doesn't show damage, uh, because why doesn't it show damage? Okay, I have the wrong, um, not max out style of map gems. Uh, so, with normal Scorching Ray, we count 8 stages, we don't replace them that much. So that's 85k. Um, 85k. Do I have anything enabled or anything important? Uh, ignited, maybe. Yeah, even with, if we just have, have the 85k times 5 totems, it's almost 500, uh, 425k DPS. Um, yeah, with this gear and no other slots equipped and the passive tree. Um, that's something we have at the start of maps, basically. Yeah, uh, that's pretty nice, I would say. Let's go back to my gear. Um, up, 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 skills tree. Let's change the tree again. Back to what I have. So, anything else I wanted to cover? Not too much, I guess. I got my passes, I got my gear, some gear options. Um, yeah, Megalomaniacs. I screenshotted some. If you go for Megalomaniacs, that's something after level 90 in the slot. Uh, there are nice things you can have. Um, like this one. Uh, you want to look for one mod you really want. Like this one, for example. Modify an aspect. Um, increase mana reservation efficiency with male volants. Uh, you might want that. Uh, it can help you. And it has Chaos Dress. Uh, that's nice as well. Then you want to check the trade site for two other mods that help you. Like this one, Despair can ex affect textproof enemies, that helps sometimes. Uh, that's okay. Mm. So, Enfeeble works all the time, that's good. And Heroism, 30% effect of Arcan Search, that's 6% more damage, um, basically, on this node. That's a nice cluster. Uh, you can look for something like that with defense. One max res, one max chaos res, a lot of chaos res, avoid poison, that's nice. Uh, armor, then we got uh, increased damage for each herald affecting you, that's 25% increased damage from this not here alone. Nice. Another option, um, increased life, increased strength, max res and increased damage, basically uh, similar to the last one. And the prices, um, yeah, 5 divine for this one, 5 divine for this one, at the end of the league. <laughs> um, that's a very nice one. Um, enemies, uh, you cull cursed enemies, like any curse, not even just punishment. You just gain culling strike, that's like 11 person more damage. Increased life, elemental damage and blind with disorienting display. Mm. So 5 divine, why not? Uh, that's why it's a late game option basically. Uh, for a decent one you pay at least one divine up to whatever you can. Mm, or this one. Um, I think it was 5 divine as well. I cut it uh, not out 
on purpose, but um, culling strike again and double life, like 16% life here and some life regen. Uh, those are options. Uh, you can use whatever you feel like. Uh, if you want more damage, go for more damage. If you want more life or defense, go for more defense in here. Mm, just do what you want with a megalomaniac. Mm, just do it with apathy doesn't work. Unnerf doesn't help us because we deal burning damage instead of mm, spell damage as a debuff. We scale with spell damage, but uh, spell damage taken doesn't work before because uh, Scorching Ray applies a burn uh, and <laughs> that's not working. I tested it. I it was a trap. I thought it was a good rule, but it doesn't work for us. Um, yeah. Mm. Before you have Anathema um, and Master of Fire, you can use a Wave of Conviction on a trap support with Combustion. Uh, that allows us to have exposure and um, since we don't use anathema early anathema early on we cannot use arcanist brand setup so you can basically slot it in here um yeah uh, that's one thing um if you don't have an additional curse here like this don't have overcharge and you don't want to replace curses with enfeeble uh, just use cold snap for example that's an option to chill enemies or use increased duration in the setup and the shock ground is up longer and uh, molten shell is up longer. Uh, that's an option as well and if you don't like frost blink you can use flame dash instead. Because why not? I, everyone has his preference. I like uh, frost blink more. But that's my thing. Uh, on some bosses or something flame dash um, might be better. Mm, for forbidden flame and forbidden flesh I haven't found anything good. Mm. I really want to use. Um, yeah, maybe Augury of Penitence. That's the best one, I would say. Um, it adds damage and reduces damage taken. That's nice. Uh, those nodes are a little bit iffy to use, not really working. Um, the best one is Sanctuary of Thought, I would say, but that's um, basically a mirror. <laughs> that's very expensive. Mm. If you would use it on another build later on, okay, buy it, but very expensive. So not really an option. Uh, Bastion of Hope. Um, you need to use Shield Charge, you need to free sockets for that. Uh, that's not good. And cast a spell recently, um, Totem Placement doesn't count. So uh, only when you basically self curse or blink around. Um, that's not a problem, but attacking. Gems for attacking, that's a problem. Uh, Radiant Crusade, I wanted to test it, but I couldn't buy the gems, nobody responded, but that might be a possibility. Mm, because of the 20% damage from hits is taken from the Sentinel, I don't know how good he will survive. That's something uh, you might want to test, if it's like two divines for both jewels, that's fine. And the rest is not really worth it, you don't want time, time of need, uh, you don't want to remove your curses. Mm. And Radiant Phase doesn't offer that much. Same for Unwavering Phase. Um, we don't have that many auras, we just use two auras basically. Um, so it's just 10% recovery. And the rest is um, other stuff like um, Herald of Ashes and Herald. Tempest Shield is not an aura and um, we are not affected by um, Defiance Banner, other enemies are affected by it, but not we. <laughs> so, uh, no, no, we are affected by it. Uh, so, we would have three things if we use Defiance Banner. Mm, so, that's not really working as well. Okay, um, I think that was it. So, I don't know, Forbidden Flame, Forbidden Flesh, I didn't find anything really useful that's, um, that's relatively cheap. Uh, for anointments, uh, for the amulet, um, of course. Uh, I allocated arsonist just because um, it's cheap. <laughs> green, green, blue, it's cheap for early on. Um, leak starter stuff, I didn't want to use golden oil on a leak start build, basically. Mm. So if you want real defense, go for prismatic skin for the max ores. Uh, that's helping a lot. Mm. 
if you want to go for uh, avoid elemental elements um, like on the shield I got 33% uh, you can get 20% here uh, you can have uh, have it as an implicit on boots or as a roll on boots or you can go for um, the shield mastery and have 20% as well mm, so that's an, a good annoyance for damage Breath of Flames is usually the best one uh, maybe Acronomy um, money, that's a possibility as well. Uh, you could go for uh, Charisma, for increased mana reservation efficiency. Uh, that's a very nice option to have. Uh, so you have an easier time um, yeah, starting with your mana stuff. Um, yeah, influence might be a possibility, something like that. There's a lot on the passage tree you could anoint. Um, I even thought about infused flesh. Uh, it's not expensive as well, and recoup is good, mm, especially uh, with petrified blood. Um, so, yeah, maybe I, I go for this one just for the defense because I think for for most content while mapping the damage is good enough. Just go for this one, um, and it's relatively cheap. It's not that expensive. One one black oil, uh, that's fine. The rest is cheap. Um, yeah, uh, go for whatever you like. There are many options. Uh, you could even just anoint uh, a power charge if you want. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. No, I don't sell this key. Um, I get spammed with the key. Uh, I open the key for you. Um, where's my, my cell window? Uh, cell key. Where's the key? I, I, I open it now. Um, Activate. I'm I'm tired. Uh, I don't want to sell it. I'm too lazy to sell it. But um, I get traded a lot uh, or whispered a lot. Alexa, okay. Uh, Alexa is talking to me. <laughs> um, yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah. I should have sold it. Okay. Um, yeah. For. Um, that's an important part as well. Uh, I have notes in here. I think I make it in default white. Okay, uh, you can use whatever color you want. Uh, you can scroll into it. Um, I write notes down. If I update something in um, this POB, um, I write it down here probably. If I change something, or, uh, I will add something here. Before posting the video, I will add some lines as well <laughs> and um, add it in the description, of course. But I made notes here about some items, what you want, maybe. I added the, the day 1 to 7 cost of some items I found on PoE Ninja. Um, like on day 2, um, that's, that's very cheap for the basic stuff. Like, there's nothing costing a divine of the base items basically but keep in mind it's on poe ninja uh, balance of turret it doesn't say uh, which mod like temp chains action speed mod we want that i don't know if it, um, it's 14 chaos on day one or this mod is 140 chaos i don't know i don't see it there mm, on poe ninja but for other items uh kikazaro self-regulation um, that's pretty much accurate, I would say. Um, that's my estimate here, what I think I would have to pay. Mm. But yeah, uh, some of the stuff is not important. Uh, you can buy cheap versions. It depends on the roll range, of course, and the day you buy the, buy the stuff. But I would say, on average, um, it's one divine per item. Uh, this character gear, that's, that's the average. Um, in, at the end of, uh, I don't know, day three or something. Some items are cheaper, uh, some are more expensive. And it depends on the day and on the rolls. Um, like, um, for example, a perfect self-flagellation on day one will cost you probably a divine orb. Um, like a 14 or 15 percent damage roll, like 5 chaos maybe. It depends a little bit. Um, but it's not super expensive uh, to set everything up. You do it piece by piece and that's the nicest thing. 
every item you equip is powerful. Um, it adds a lot of power to you. You feel every item. And once you have gear like this, um, that's basically the gear you can do most of the stuff. And even after that point, you can upgrade further. Corrupting Anathema, etc. Like my POB warrior gear, um, double corrupt. <laughs> I don't think uh, the spring exists even in the game. I just wanted to show you the options you can have. Uh, cannot be poisoned, nice. Bleeding cannot be inflicted on you, nice. You can have rest on it, etc. Mm. Mage blood, of, of course, is an option late in the game. Mm. Uh, very nice. Um, yeah, with uh, with the max rest change, you uh, change. You have nine max rest on every slot. So in, in the setup, I would sit at 98% max res, <laughs> all the good stuff, uh, the POP warrior stuff. Uh, but it's mainly to show you um, which stats you want um, or you could have, uh, basically. Um, not to make something realistic, but um, like on the boost, you can have um, action speed, life regeneration rate, um, uh, some spell suppress as well which helps a little bit, um, yeah, um, the read is very like plus four gem levels for auras, uh, it's a possibility, socket gems here, uh, on a shield you have many mods you might want to want, um, besides plus one totems and life, like two max to all maximum, uh, two to all maximum rest is um, probably the best one you can get, you can have recover life on block, um, that helps with the defense, something like that. Uh, you won't have such a shield. Uh, well, it's very, very expensive, but uh, it should just show you um, which mods are the most desirable, in my opinion, um, on the shield. You can even have a squad shield. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I think uh, a decent life roll, uh, someone extra totem plus two marks always um, shield is viable for like five to ten divine something like that I guess uh, so that's something where you can uh, squeeze out extra defense and um, yeah maybe even damage uh, on some slots um, like the wand like this one uh, with this POB warrior gear I'm sitting at like um, yeah, way more millions of damage. I don't want to do it. You can check it yourself. The video is one hour long. Uh, I, I think I stop here. Mm. But I got some stuff in here. So I max out gems, awakened elemental, focus, and um, burning damage. Mm, very nice. Very nice. Mm. Okay. That's about it. Like I said, uh, the notes, I add something to it if I find something. Um, and update the POB um, linked in the video description. If I make changes, I will make a pinned comment and uh, write it down under the video. And uh, you can see what changed from uh, from the day I recorded this video. And yeah, once the league starts, I will make update videos about this build, uh, progress videos basically. Um, yeah, new items can of course uh, change some things I do with this um, character, maybe new directions, new crafting options, etc. Um, and yeah, then of course, if there's a new unit that makes him hexproof, I might not need the helmet. And I use another slot, for example. Um, that's something we don't know yet. I haven't included any tattoos. Uh, tattoos can help as well. We have a lot of end. We can remove end um, and use tattoos instead and min max around. There are a lot of possibilities um, with the character. You can even go for a CI version if you want. Okay, uh, that's about it. Have a nice day. Have a nice league start. And uh, bye bye.